this is Carl Martin. This video will focus on the constellation Leo the Lion. Leo is one of the 12 constellations of the zodiac, patterns of stars through which the sun passes during its yearly transit. This zodiac sign covers the period from July 23rd to August 22nd. So if your birthday is included in this range, then happy birthday! Leo is one of the more easily recognizable constellations of the 12 zodiac members. There are several bright stars in this section of our night skies which give us a distinctive pattern. There are some very interesting treasures in Leo. Constellation. First, let's look at the constellation. Here is a screenshot of the software with the constellation outline overlaying the sky map close-up. The constellation is so large it does not fit in one screenshot. This shows three screenshots stitched together. Constellation Distance View. Here is the same sky map view, but in distance view mode. This shows which stars are closer by their size. Closest stars. The closest stars in Leo are four dim red dwarfs and one white dwarf. First, we load the Leo tag file. Start with the software centered at our home solar system, 000. Then change the viewing cube size to 104.4 light years, or 32 parsecs. Next, change the moving speed to 52.2 light years, 16 parsecs. Then move once in the minus direction along the x axis, and once in the positive direction for the y axis. Lastly, change the move speed to 26.1 light years per click, 8 parsecs, and move once in the positive direction for the z axis. This puts our home star system just above the corner, giving us the largest possible view of LEO stars. Second, we go into star list mode, selecting the LEO tag and location within a distance of user supplied coordinates. Here we're using light years and type in 30 for the search centered on 000. The closest star is Wolf 359 at 7.79 light years. For any Star Trek fans, they will recognize this as the system where the Borg met the Federation in deadly combat in the Star Trek Next Generation series. Next is A.D. Leonis at 16 light years. Farther out is Gliese 402, a spectral binary star, at 22.5 light years. Nearby stands Gliese 408 at 22.6 light years. Finally, we come to a degenerate white dwarf star, MSDB 1943, at 28.6 light years. In our night sky, A.D. Leonis appears right next to the far brighter Gamma Leonis. What's interesting about this pair is that these two stars are not very close in 3D space, as you can see here. Ironically, the dimmer star is far closer, betraying our sense that brighter means closer. But think of it this way. A distant nuclear explosion could be brighter than a nearby candle. When placed at the same distance, stars would reveal a wide range of intrinsic brightnesses. Brightest stars. The brightest star in the constellation is Regulus, or Alpha Leonis, a super-hot B7 dwarf at 80.1 light years. It has a visual magnitude of 1.35, making it one of the few first magnitude stars in our night skies. Regulus was recently discovered to be a five star system. A very close spectral binary companion is thought to be a white dwarf, which lost most of its mass to the primary star perhaps a few million years ago. This made Regulus A far hotter and more massive than it had been when its companion was still in its stellar adulthood or main sequence. 
Until this companion was discovered, Regulus was thought to have been only 50 to 100 million years old. But the existence of the white dwarf companion suggests that the system is more likely a billion years old. In addition, Regulus B and C form a wide binary which orbits their common center of gravity roughly once every 2,000 years. The BC pair orbits Regulus A once every few million years or so. Regulus B is a K1 dwarf with a magnitude 8.13. Regulus C is an M4 dwarf with a magnitude 13.1. Regulus D is estimated to be an M2 red dwarf with a magnitude 12.1. Regulus D does not have an orbital motion about the central four stars, but shares their common proper motion, or true space motion. Next brightest is Beta Leonis, an A3 dwarf at 41.3 light years. It has a visual magnitude of 2.14, not quite first magnitude, but still a bright second magnitude star. Beta Leonis, also called Dinabola, lion's tail, is a binary star system with an M7 dwarf with a magnitude 15.7. This is followed by Delta Leonis, sometimes called Zosma, an A4 dwarf at 63.3 light years. It has a magnitude of 2.56. Delta Leonis is a binary star system with a K4 dwarf with a magnitude 8.56. No orbital motion has been detected, but both stars share a similar proper motion. Next is Gamma Leonis, also known as Algeba, a K1 giant star at 102 light years. It has a magnitude of 2.61. Its binary companion is a G7 giant with a magnitude 3.8 and an orbital period of 618 years. Rounding out the top five is Epsilon Leonis, a G1 supergiant at 331 light years. It has a magnitude 2.98. Epsilon Leonis, also known as Algenubi, is a single star. Interesting stars. Leo has several interesting stars. First up is Omega Leonis at 71 light years. This is a binary star system of two stars similar to our own sun. Both have an age and chemistry compatible with life. The primary is an F9 dwarf with a visual magnitude of 5.87. The secondary is a G3 dwarf with a visual magnitude of 6.57. They orbit a common center of gravity in 118 years with an orbital eccentricity of 0.55, similar to that found in the Alpha Centauri system. The most interesting aspect of this system is its age, about 3 billion years. This is long enough for the planets to form and for life to get a foothold. On Earth, the major bombardment had been over by about 2 billion years, and oxygen had become well established in the atmosphere by about 2.5 billion years. If this system has an Earth-like planet orbiting each star, this system could be a prime location for settlers. The star 35 Leonis, at 93 light years distance, is another binary system with a chemistry similar to that of our own solar system. However, the system is about 1.8 billion years older than Earth, at about 6.3 billion years total. The system primary is a G1.5 dwarf transitioning towards subgiant. In other words, it's somewhat larger and brighter than a G1 dwarf on the main sequence. The system is a close binary, with a secondary estimated to be a K1 dwarf. If an Earth-like planet exists there, it has likely suffered extreme warming, enough to make our current Ice Age interglacial look downright frozen. Our next interesting star has at least one known planet. This is Mu Leonis, at 204 light years. The star is a K2 giant with a visual magnitude of 3.88. Mu Leonis is roughly 3.35 billion years old and has a mass of about 1.5 times that of our own Sun. This would have made it an F2 dwarf in the main sequence, and too young to have developed advanced life as we know it. The known planet has a mass of 2.4 times that of Jupiter, and an orbital period of 357.8 days, similar to our own year. Mu Leonis is a metal-rich star system, so any terrestrial planets or moons might be prime locations for mining. Gamma Leonis, at 102 light years, also has a known planet. The star, as we've already seen, is a binary system with a K1 giant primary and a G7 giant secondary. 
The planet orbits the primary once every 428.5 days, slightly longer than our own year. Like many of the planets discovered, this one is far more massive than Jupiter, 8.78 times its mass, in fact. The star is estimated to be 5.8 billion years old, with a mass of 1.23 times that of our own Sun. As a main sequence star, it may have been an F8 dwarf. The system, however, is extremely metal poor and therefore may not possess any terrestrial worlds. Galaxies. There are quite a number of galaxies visible in LEO. The six most famous come in two groupings. First is the LEO triplet. From our vantage point here on Earth, the LEO triplet appears to stand about halfway between Theta and Iota Leonis, along the back leg of the lion. Here's what the triplet looks like. M65, also known as NGC 3623, is at a distance of 35 million light years. M66, also known as NGC 3627, is at a distance of 36 million light years. The width of the galaxy is estimated at 95,000 light years across. NG3628 is the last member of the LEO triplet at a distance of 35 million light years. The second batch of galaxies is called the M96 group. With your telescope, you can spot this configuration of galaxies about halfway between Iota and Alpha Leonis, or Regulus. Here's what the closer pair, M95 and M96, look like. M95, also known as NGC 3351, is at a distance of 38 million light years. M96, also known as NGC 3368, is at a distance of 35 million light years. M105, also known as NGC 3379, is at a distance of 32 million light years. Alien skies. From Omega Leonis, a system with two sun-like stars. Here's what Orion looks like. As expected, there are some dramatic changes in the shape of the constellation. The bright star invading Orion's shoulder, Betelgeuse, is Beta Canis Minoris. From Earth, Xi Geminorum is on the other side of Orion. Here, it appears where the Hyades would be seen from our own star system. The face of Taurus, the bull, is trailing the Pleiades instead of leading it as it would be seen from Earth. From Omega Leonis, Beta Tauri appears to be hovering close to the Pleiades. Looking in the Earth-bound direction of Vega, we don't find Alpha Lyrae, but we do find many of the Big Dipper stars. Here's Alcor and Mizar, the double-double of the Ursa Major Cluster. Looking back in the direction of our own Sun, we see that it is a dim fifth magnitude star as seen from Alpha Leonis far brighter in the visual vicinity of Sol is Sirius, Procyon, and Beta Aquarii. Equally as dim as our own system is the Alpha Centauri system. And there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed this Leo birthday zodiac look at the constellation.